Hello, welcome to the video lecture series of the subject name Web Designing, subject code KCS052 and it is the fourth and the fifth topic of the unit one and the topic names are Responsive Web Design and Types of Websites. So for making a responsive website, the objective of the responsive website is it always sends the same HTML code to each and every device because we are in the when we are in the era of uh, the technology where the technologies are rapidly growing so it means the number of devices and different kinds of devices are always keeping in progress so before if we recall the period of just 20 years back there were a one only one desktop so it's mean that time we need to only the one kind of website with the with the specific uh, screen resolution just need to do the same same uh, lines of code for uh, for only for one device well if we talk about in the, the current technology it's mean we have a different kinds of smartphones with with a different uh, screen resolution even we have a uh, big screens we have a laptops we have a desktops so it means if one, the one option is we need to create the different websites or we need to different codes for different kinds of devices but it is not being feasible because some of the time it's it's uh, it's a time taking process and to execute all the versions of your websites so once the google crawl or the google boot execute your or accessing your all versions of your website it is too it is a too cumbersome task and it always taking too much time so to overcome this problem so uh, there is the concept that is called the responsive web designing. So always the responsive designing, it means the server always sends the same HTML code, whether uh, either the customer or the client is using, either it's a desktop, it is a laptop, or it may be in the, in the versions of the laptop, either you're using the 15 inches of laptop or the 14 inches of laptop. If you are using, accessing the same website on the, uh, even on the Android or even on the Apple phone, so the, the response that is coming from the server is always the same that is the same html code but now the your website or the code the, the website designing code must have the feasible must have the functionality to adjust according to the device size so you can see it here so it, it's so the same website which is coming from the server which is coming from the server is actually it is running on the system as well as running on the tablet as well as running on perfectly running on the same for different kind of devices so i'm taking the three different kind of devices desktop or the tablet or the smartphones right similarly so responsive design serves all device with the same code that adjust for the screen so it means we do not need to write the different versions of the codes we need to just write a single code but there should be some different kinds of tags which always check before displaying the content the kind of the device so if it is a desktop immediately it will re adjust the screen resolution if it is a dick tablet it will readjust the screen resolution so for for this example you can see here the two kinds of different uh, layouts of the similar websites so you can see it here actually this particular it is the it, uh, this adjustment is actually belongs to the desktop view well it is not visible because the always the customer is wanted to view the content on the first side if it needs to explore it it needs to zoom the content so this is obviously it is a time consuming task so always the user is wants to view the content on the first side so it means it is a right version one so immediately once the similar code is accessing on the smartphones eventually it will readjust itself and now you can see the content size or the size of the font is different so it means there is the big role of the css cascading style sheet and even for the javascript too so javascript will tell you so javascript will tell you the actual structure of the actual device standard and once you know the device standard name whether it is a desktop whether it is a tablet or whether it is a mobile phone now the it is a responsibility of the css to select a particular css which is either related to the desktop 
if it is related to the smartphones because we are getting the similar html code but now which particular css is applicable on which particular device is totally because of the combination of these two standards or these two representative languages like javascript and the css now why the role of responsive web designing is important once we are creating a very attractive website or uh, once our objective is to attract the more and more customers because uh, if uh, if i'm just writing a one specific uh, website only for a particular device like suppose for the desktop so it is not feasible because we cannot restrict the user to only to use or to open the website only on the desktop because because of the lack of the time might be user can access your website once he is he is traveling or even he is driving so in that case it cannot carry the laptop always it will access the same website over the i over there the smartphones so it means there is a very important or high applicability or a very high importance of the responsive designing of a responsive website so we recommend using the responsive design because of these several reasons the first reason is make it easier for user to share a link to your content with a single url this line states that if i am accessing your website on my phone if i want to share the similar link of your website to my friend which is accessing the website on a uh, desktop so it means your website must be readjusted with based on the devices if it cannot be capable to readjust then there is no requirement to share your device or the content from one point to another point it's mean it will be failed so it is very important one if your website is more responsive it's mean it is it can be easily circulated from one point to another point similarly it requires the less engineering time to maintain multiple pages for the same content yes it is very important because with the change in slightly change in the css you can create the many numbers of variations of a same website of a same similar html code for a different kind of devices reduce the possibility of the common mistake that affects the mobile side because obviously if you replicate the similar code and if you need to change some some changes for the mobile devices but if you forgot the to, to complete the or finish the same changes on the other kinds of variations of the website obviously this this kind be common mistakes can be can be arised similarly require no re re redirection for users to have device optimized view in some of the in previously we have seen that the user need to just readjust the uh, desktop view or from desktop view to the mobile view now once you have changes the only the css then there is no device optimization is requirement saves the so resources when google bot crawls your sites obviously if you are uh, hosting your website if you have created many numbers of variation obviously it will take too much time or too well is too much storage so definitely the cost of your maintenance of your hosting of website will be increasing so if you are just changing the css which is very few kilo kb uh, the size is very in a, in a very few kb kilobytes so it means the size and as well as it will save the resources so these are the specific reasons why the responsive designs are the requirement and now in the next slide we will talk about the type of different websites so there are the two kinds of websites so one is your static which is purely an html based language html based websites another one is dynamic so there are many many numbers of, uh, of variations we can use the php asp active server pages jsp or cold fusions so that makes the website more attractive and more dynamic and, and however the static website is already written in the plain html and that is in the code of the page that is displayed to the user so it is actually what exactly the use uh, the developer is writing it is actually it is similarly it is display on the user's content so for a for a static uh, website if i'm taking example of welcome guest if the developer is written as a welcome guest so definitely it will be display on the client side to welcome test however for the dynamic website you can change the if if the user is authenticated you can replace the guest keyword with their name specific with their name so it's mean we need to bind some examples or we can need to bind some databases with these 
uh, with these server side scripting languages for making the dynamic website we need to choose up one particular server side scripting language such as the php asp jsp and Groove fusion in such site uh, content is called in by scripting language from other files or from a database depending on action taken by the user it's mean that there must be some scripting languages which calls the databases and it pulls the content from the databases and it will merge the content which is received from the database with the with these scripting languages so uh, uh, after that the server will make a simple html response page and which will be retrieved uh, retrieved by the client sites now there are many numbers of advantages which is related to the static and dynamic pages the first static advantage is the flexibility because the static websites are the flex are the more flexible the reason is the user the developer having uh, many numbers of uh, option it can create the different kinds of layout for each and every different pages even the every page can be different if it is desired so because there is no uh, hard and fast rule there is no connectivity between any one page to any other page so it's mean there is a more flexibility to choose a different kinds of layout for different kind for different web pages the designer is free to put any special kinds of efforts and client may ask for a unique way on different pages so you can create different pages with the different styles this allows the theming for instance an author may want to different theme for different book and associated so it is a very similar one so for a different kinds of pages let's suppose if i'm taking an example of a book if the author wants to take a different pages with a different color and style code so you can say it, the start in the static sites you can select a different kinds of pages in terms of the cost is generally lower up front than the dynamic site so it is very cheaper than the dynamic website because there is no cost of the dynamic website there is no cost of harding hard uh, tech hard uh, coding similarly for the dynamic the advantages are because it is a dynamic website so in connecting them to the databases and it easily can pull all information in an organized and a structured way to create a product let's suppose if you want to display hello user with the name so you can easily pull these name information from the databases the ability to connect a database means that you can collect create a content management system it means once you are creating a dynamic website you can maintain a content management system you can up and down based on the user preferences you can you can show a particular content to a particular kinds of users or if you want to hide the particular content from the different kind of customer you can do it here there are little or non going cost unless there is a change in the basic design or extra capability is added in terms of the cost whatever you have already incurred the cost will be stable until unless if you do some major changes in your setups similarly there are some disadvantages are inbuilt with the static and dynamic pages websites also the disadvantage is that the main problem with then static website appears when you wish to update the content if you want to update a content on one page and it's is related to the other pages so you need to change you need to put changes on each and every pages so it will not automatically it cannot be changed on each and every page this may be perfectly okay when the new page is required which needs design input but all of you want to do some text when they can use since for other client and designers so it's mean if you want to add a new page but if it is not related to the previous page so it's, it is okay but if it is related so then there is there must be some binding between the last page and the current page the second main problem is scalability because the site is not scalable because if you wish to share product on your site you have to lot of them then you made to construct individual pages for each and one so because if you are designing a static site for for a particular sailing of any kind of project so you need to manually update these project manually update the cost of these project however the cost there are the ongoing cost for updating the content so this cost is if you want to put some major changes on your static website so it's mean definitely the cost of your website will be high similarly some there are some disadvantages related to the dynamic websites the design of a dynamic website is more fixed than the static one because many of the pages are essentially and they are they are connected with each other so it means if you want to change in any one of the change it is typically tough but it is easy so if you if i put changes in one of the area definitely it will be changed on the other end page cost are higher initially than for the static site and additionally functionality may also cost more so particularly if it is something that was not in in ways originally and required rewriting of the core of the code the disadvantage is that if you want to change your complete scenario of your website definitely the cost will be high 
so these are the uh, types of website and you can see the advantages and disadvantage those are incurred with these different kinds of static and you can select the static and dynamic based on the requirement of your company or all your organizations.